Hello, I'm Mick Southlum, and today I'd like to talk to you about ethical and unethical experience gain in Fire Emblem. But first, let's start with some introduction. Experience as a mechanic in Fire Emblem represents how characters learn from fighting and become more skilled combatants as the game goes on. By defeating enough enemies, even the greenest recruit can become a hardened veteran by the end of the game. Experience determines when characters level up, which increases their stats and makes them a more powerful unit. And as such, experience is one of the most important resources in Fire Emblem games. It is so important that it is often one of the main motivators behind gameplay action. And that's because having more experience means having better characters. And having better characters increases your odds of completing gameplay objectives and beating the game. Generally, experience is best obtained as early as possible and in as high quantity as possible because more experience means more power and obtaining it earlier means more time to use that power. All else equal, it is better to obtain experience in chapter 5 than in chapter 15. So we've established that experience is important and that players will take it if it is possible, but sometimes it is there but it is not taken. Why is that? There are a variety of reasons of why this could be. Maybe it's too difficult to get the experience. Maybe you don't need it at this point in the game. Maybe it takes too much time to get. Maybe it's risky to get it, there's a random chance involved. Or maybe there's some kind of weird ethical concern. And now we come to the topic of the day. Ethical experience and unethical experience. Ethical experience being experience that is okay to get, and unethical experience being XP that is not okay to get. You might have a vague idea of what I'm talking about at this point. But the question is, why is there this distinction? I'll start by giving some common examples of ethical and unethical experience. Some of the more common sources of ethical experience include hit XP, which is XP you gain from hitting enemies, kill XP, which you get from defeating enemies, and routing entire maps to get as much kill XP as you can is a common and acceptable practice. There's staff XP from using healing staffs or other support actions, there's bonus XP from objectives like in Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn, there's increased XP gain from various skills and weapons, and there's the XP you get from playing guided or paralog chapters. This list isn't exhaustive or complete, but it probably encompasses most cases. And now, let's talk about the various sources of unethical experience. There's boss abuse, staff or dance spamming, arena abuse, skirmishes or tower volney, DLC, and grinding infinite reinforcements. Let's go through each of these in detail. Boss abuse is the act of repeatedly attacking enemies with infinite sources of healing, which are often bosses sitting on throne tiles, to obtain additional hit XP. And this kind of experience gain is typically limited by unit growth. If a unit becomes too powerful, eventually they will stop gaining XP, or the enemy will be killed by your increasing stats, which will eventually cut off the XP source. You are also limited by the number of weapons you have, but typically that does not come into consideration. The next one is Staff or Dance Spam, which is the act of repeatedly using support actions that gain XP, such as healing with staves or dancing. Obviously, this method is limited to characters who can heal or dance, so only those kinds of characters can benefit from this kind of experience gain. And oftentimes, Staff use is limited by gold cost of the staves, and Dance Spam is often limited to very specific characters that typically do not benefit from having higher levels. Azura from Fire Emblem Fates Conquest is a notable exception as she can become a surprisingly competent combat unit by spending 15 hours grinding her to level 36. Arena abuse is the act of repeatedly entering arenas to obtain experience and retreating under unfavorable conditions where you might lose. And this is a highly random process. Getting your character killed in the arena is undesirable which means that you'll probably have to reset the chapter and lose a lot of time. As a result, this method is often paired with save states or save scumming to improve the reliability of the method. You can also get experience at skirmishes or Tower of Oni, or any other procedurally generated map that has no connection to the main story. Typically, you'll be fighting a set of randomly generated level appropriate enemies, but in some games, experience gained from these is limited, and typically use of these mechanics are infinite or practically infinite. Though, again, in some games, they're gated by gold costs or real life time. DLC is also another source of unethical experience, where you can exchange real life money for an advantage in your single player game. And often the game is not really balanced around these features. DLC based experience can manifest in the form of items that grant you additional experience, or additional maps with an increased experience gain rate compared to the base game. 
And there's also infinite reinforcements. Some maps have infinitely spawning or summoned enemies that can be defeated for XP at a normal rate. But others account for this by giving these enemies void curse effects to reduce or nullify the benefits you gain by defeating them. And now we move on to the big ticket question of the day. What differentiates ethical from unethical experience? And as the name suggests, I think that the primary factor that differentiates the two is whether or not it is fair. But what does that mean? What does fairness mean? What does it mean in the context of different games, of different difficulty settings, of different playstyles? And most importantly, why does it matter? So I think that the main reason that people in the Fire Emblem community have created these standards is to provide comparable platforms for a reasonable expected power level for comparable discussion. Because obviously, a player that has played 30 skirmish maps, beaten the Tower of Oni 10 times, grinded the Lagjo Ruins for 30 pairs of boots, they're going to be much more powerful than a player who's only played the main story. Then obviously, their opinions on almost anything in the game will be much different. And so by setting standards for what experience is okay and not okay to get, then this allows discussion to become more constrained and thus more productive to some degree. And this all stems from the structure of most Fire Emblem campaigns. Fire Emblem campaign structure generally consists of a mostly linear sequence of campaign chapters with interspersed optional chapters, which are guidance chapters or paralogue chapters. Later Fire Emblem titles make these optional chapters separate from a linear sequence of campaign chapters, but the structure remains mostly the same. At its core, Fire Emblem is a game designed around having limited resources, and our definition of fairness primarily stems from this game design philosophy. So, ethical experience is typically limited and finite. Most Fire Emblem chapters have a limited number of enemies, and thus a limited amount of experience. Most experience is gained by defeating enemies, and since most maps have limited numbers of enemies, then you can only get a finite amount of experience from each map. And Parallel chapters and Guidance chapters are also a fair game because they can only be played once. And this is often critical to maintaining balance in a contiguous campaign, because if you can obtain infinite experience in chapter 1, then you've destroyed the difficulty curve and there's likely to be little challenge in the rest of the game. On the flip side, unethical experience is often unlimited or exceedingly substantial for when you can get it. And while some of these sources are not strictly speaking actually infinite, because you'll eventually run out of weapon uses or staff uses, or you'll hit the XP cap, but typically the only real limit is how much you want to do them. Ethical experience is typically gained by normal intended gameplay interactions. And most sources of ethical experience are ones you get by playing the game normally or how you're intended to, by defeating enemies, by feeding kills, by using skills that give you more XP, and taking advantage of enemies that grant more XP than normal like bosses or gorgon eggs. That's all intended and that's all fair. On the flip side, unethical experience is typically obtained by unintended or exploitative sources. Hitting an enemy for XP is an intended way to get XP, but hitting them 2,000 times while they repeatedly heal under 4 is probably not the developer's intention. And some games even actively account for this. Fire Emblem 12 on the higher difficulties, or Fire Emblem Fates, will intentionally reduce the amount of XP that you get from hitting the same enemy over and over until it reaches 0. But then the question is, that makes that experience limited. Does that make it fair? Does that make it ethical? And I think by most definitions, probably no, because most unethical experience is exceedingly tedious to obtain. Most unethical XP sources are often obtained by performing exceedingly repetitive actions. And the reason why most people might consider this unethical is because most Fire Emblem discussion takes place between people who have played the game or want to play the game multiple times. And while grinding 1 million gold in the Fire Emblem 12 arena might be fun the first time you try it, it will be probably extremely painful if you have to do it every time you play. And so it's not something you can reasonably expect people to do. In a similar sense, highly random experience is also probably unethical. For example, those sparkly tiles you see on the ground that grant XP in like Fire Emblem Awakening or Fire Emblem Engage, that's probably not fair to consider. Same for experience you get from finding in the arena. It's theoretically infinite, but it's risky. If you fail, you have to reset the map and then you're wasting a lot of time. It's not really fair to expect people to arena grind or get lucky with tiles on the ground. And experience that's only available to a subset of players is also probably unethical. For example, DLC grinding maps are only available to people who pay money or sail the high seas. And thus, using these is unethical, especially if there are no alternative methods in the game of getting that kind of XP. For example, Fire Emblem Fates Conquest explicitly disables skirmishes for balance reasons, but then lets you pay money to do skirmishes. <laughs> That's not really fair, is it?
It's not necessarily reasonable to assume that everyone buys all the DLC or becomes a buccaneer. And this might be the only time where real life ethics actually comes into play, because being nickel and dimed for gameplay advantages in a single player game is pretty predatory business practice, and I'm not a fan of that. And so I think these are a couple of guidelines for what amounts to unethical or unfair experience in Fire Emblem. Unethical experience is theoretically infinite or very substantial for when you get it. It can make the game significantly easier than intended. It's often tedious to obtain. It's sometimes highly advantaged or not consistently obtainable across playthroughs, or uses unfair advantages that are not available to everyone. And any combination of these elements can contribute to the feeling that some experience is tainted or unfair. But much like in real life, morality is relative. Different games can have different standards of fairness. For example, Fire Emblem 4, the arena in that game can be ethical because it's limited and you're probably expected to do it if you want a high rank. And in Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon, on hard fire difficulty, boss abuse can be ethical because it's only a slight bit removed from actual normal gameplay. The standard method for defeating the chapter 1 boss on a hard fire difficulty is by throwing 30 million javelins at him. So what's 30 million more? And in Fire Emblem Awakening, Lunatic and Lunatic Plus, common chapter 1 strategies including walking onto the water and abusing the enemy AI to squeeze as much XP out of the enemies as possible in a manner that might be considered degenerate in other games but a standard fare here. And in the same sense, what's fair or not will change depending on the difficulty setting, because the intended experience will be different. For example, Fire Emblem Engage has a limited number of skirmishes in matting difficulty, and effectively unlimited number in hard difficulty, because the intended experience is different. And in the same sense, when you do a self-imposed challenge, such as an Iron Man where you cannot load saves or reset maps, this often results in players resorting to otherwise unethical or unfair XP sources like staff grinding or boss abuse because they feel like the experience becomes more necessary under these conditions and thus they rationalize to become more acceptable. And ultimately because people feel it's fair then it is fair. So in the same way that water changes shape to fill a container, fairness and ethics in experience adjust to what ends up being needed, which is why the definition changes depending on the context. And this is because once you've beaten a Fire Emblem game, it's much easier on later playthroughs. And so standards are needed to restrict you to only the resources that are necessary. And typically, on repeat playthroughs, unfair or tedious methods are the most undesirable, and so they tend to be the first ones discarded. But if you take on additional limitations, then some of those XP sources might become more necessary and thus you may feel like they're more fair. In conclusion, Fire Emblem communities have tried to establish common ground for discussion at consistent difficulty levels by limiting what resources are acceptable to obtain, and that leads to standards of fair or ethical experience gain. And these standards are often case by case, game by game, though there are some common characteristics shared by many unethical XP sources, typically ones that are outside of the intended game design, repetitive, tedious, not accessible to all players, or not reliable to obtain. But this is all context dependent. Some higher difficulties or self-imposed challenges might require some of these methods. But ultimately, I think whether or not experience is ethical or unethical is not a judgment on your playstyle, but rather about whether or not you can reasonably expect other people to have done the same thing that you did. For example, I would not expect people to grind a 0 to level 36 in the Fire Emblem Fates prologue, or to grind a million gold in Fire Emblem 12, or to use white magic to get Violet to level 99 in Fire Emblem 3 Houses. And since I can't expect other people to do this, I can't really bring this into a discussion without some major caveats. Anyway, my sources for this video are uh, my own head, my thoughts, me, uh, myself, and I. Just, uh, just trust me, bro. And now some discussion questions for you guys in the comments section. Do, do you take all experience that's available or just the experience that is intended? What actions do you consider to be unethical or dishonorable or unfair in Fire Emblem? And what do you think are the major influences for your opinion? Is it the game? Is it your personal experience? Is it the difficulty? Is it community opinion? Let me know in the comments down below. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'm trying a new format, making actual PowerPoint presentations and talking over them. So if you want to see more videos like this, let me know in the comments down below. And make sure to like and subscribe. Okay, that's it. Bye.